This story starts with a man named Elkanah. He was married to a woman named Penina, and also to a woman named Hannah. But the story isn't really about him. It's all about Hannah and how she prayed. Penina had children, but Hannah did not have any children, and this made her very sad. Between his two wives, Elkanah definitely loved Hannah the most. He would shower her with gifts and try to comfort her, saying, I can be better to you than ten sons could ever be. But even though he was very affectionate, Hannah just couldn't shake the deep disappointment of wanting to be a mother, but not being able to. What's worse is that any time Elkanah was away, Penina would make fun of Hannah. She would tell her that she was a failure, call her names, and say that maybe God just hated her. This went on for years. Hannah would try to have a baby, but would be unsuccessful. And Penina would mercilessly ridicule her. Finally, Hannah had enough. She went to Shiloh, the capital city, and went into the temple to pray. As Hannah prayed, she cried. She wondered why having a child, the one thing she wanted more than anything, seemed to come so effortlessly to everyone else. She also made a vow that if God would answer her prayer, she would raise her child as a priest, as a way of saying thank you. As Hannah was praying, a man named Eli saw her. Eli was the high priest, a big shot. And when he saw this strange woman in his temple, rocking back and forth and crying, he assumed she was drunk and told her to leave. But Hannah stood up for herself. She explained that she was not drunk, but that she was actually pouring out her heart to God. When Eli heard this and saw her faith, he reassured her that God would absolutely answer her prayers. And Hannah believed him. Perhaps for the first time, she really felt that God was on her side. After that, Hannah was genuinely happy, trusting completely that God does answer our prayers. She went home to her husband and a little while later became pregnant with her first child. She gave birth to a son named Samuel and was overjoyed. And she kept her promise to God, letting Eli raise Samuel as a priest. What changed for Hannah? In the past, her prayers might have started with herself. She might have thought, I want to be a mother. I deserve to be a mother. I would make a great mother, better than all those other mothers. Her prayers might have started with jealousy, too. Why does Penina get to be a mother and not me? But when Hannah made her vow to God in the temple, something was different. You might say that all those years she'd been praying, God had been listening, and he'd been exalting her desires, lifting them up until they became more spiritual. Now, Hannah's focus wasn't on herself anymore. It was on God. And that steadfast focus on God shut out all the fear and jealousy and despair she was feeling. In that moment, God really became the biggest thing in the room to her. After giving birth to Samuel, Hannah went on to have at least four more children. And in the very next chapter of the Bible, you can find a beautiful poem she wrote expressing her heartfelt gratitude to God. Hannah's story shows the Bible's promise. Miracles can happen when you let God into your heart and let him mold and exalt your desires into their glorious fulfillment. <laughs>